Father, this morning we've gathered in this place to worship you, and we invite you to come and inhabit this praise this morning. Over this moment, and over this season, and over this story, Jesus is Lord. And over my family, and over my friendships, and over my neighbor, Jesus is Lord. And over this body, and over this mission, in the church he's been, Jesus is Lord. Come on, declare it. And over our city, and over our nation, all generations, Jesus is Lord. your Lord this morning. You're high and lifted up. 
There's no name like you, Lord. There's no name above you. You're the king of all kings. You're the Lord of lords. And we just honor you in this place this morning, God.
take away. Oh, what can take away my hallelujah? No darkness can contain my hallelujah. Your cross is made away for my hallelujah. My
Come on. Come on, that's right.
with everything that is going on. With everything that's going on, God is making his name great. God is making his name great. God is making his name great. He's making it to be seen again. The splendors and majesty of who he is. We're going to start seeing it. We're going to start seeing it. Not only are we going to start seeing it, but we're going to experience it. And as we experience it, other people are going to see it and they're going to go, God is great. In the midst of everything going on, God's name is great and worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you this morning for all that you're doing. And we're not going to be able to be silent in the day in which we live. Silence is over. God is wakening the lion on the inside of us. And Father, I thank you. Great is your name and greatly to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Woo! Did y'all notice they're starting to crown the road up, bring in material, and uh, we're fixing to get it where it ain't going to be dusty. Come on, God's good. Amen. God is good. And God is good. It'd be nice to not have all that dust, all <laughs> kids writing your name in your... <laughs> oh, man. We've been talking about possessing and bearing fruit. Title of my message is, What's the Battle? You hear, fight the good fight. We hear a lot about fighting, and man, it'd be so easy for this bunch if we could just lay hands on. But that's not our battle. When it comes to being fruitful and possessing, there is a battle. But what is it? There is a battle for our mind going on. Something that we've always taught in some of our, in our rodeo camps is thoughts become words, words become actions, actions become habits. It's your habits that become your character. So it all starts with our thoughts. So our thought process has got, is always under an attack. And we have to win the battle of the mind because this is where the devil's battlefield is with us. And so Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And those things are always trying to influence us. And influence is to affect or alter by indirect or intangible means. So there's always a suggestion taking place. There's always a suggestion trying to influence us to take a step back or fear or worry or anxiety or assume. Come on, y'all with me? This morning, my prayer has been that when I preach this, that your spiritual eyes are open this morning. Because if if you can ask God to open your spiritual eyes to what's really going on, this word 
will dramatically change your life. And you will never see things the same again. Not only will you see things differently, but you can, then you can step back and have a view, a perspective from faith to be able to possess and bear fruit. Come on, are y'all with me? And so if you can... Ask God one thing this morning. Ask him to open your spiritual eyes that you can see this word. Because if you can get your spiritual eyes open to see, it's going to change what's going on in your natural. And there's a lot of things in our natural that has to change and they won't change until you get your spiritual eyes open. Because our war is not with flesh and blood. But it gets, come on, are y'all with me? See, the greatest thing that we'll also see in this is what needs to be pruned off of our life that's keeping us to, from possessing more of the promised land. Come on. What we're thinking is always playing a part in what we're saying. Whatever you're dwelling on, if, and, and that's why I, I have, and, I, and I, I'm on the doom and gloom crowd. The rapture's happening. Jesus is coming back at any moment. Let me kind of shock you a minute. I don't care. <laughs> that's not my job to worry whether or not Jesus is coming back right now. My job is to possess, to bear fruit while I'm here. And it irks me to no end that the enemy will feed us an ounce of truth to shove a pound of lie down our throat. And it pulled up on my feed. I was Scrolling through my feed, and it says, AI is created by the devil. Jesus is coming back, and we've got to. <sighs> yeah, Jesus is coming back. And yeah, you need to be prepared. Yes, there's a lot of things going on. But no, the devil did not create artificial intelligence. A human being with the thought process and the creativity, will the devil pervert artificial intelligence? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what you've always got to be aware of. But they're going to start throwing little things out there at you like that to get you all jerked up so that you're not occupying so that you're not possessing, so that you're not bearing fruit, but you're just doom and gloom, and you're just waiting to get holy hoovered out of here. Come on. Because a lot of the stuff that's getting us all jerked up about the end times, it's keeping us from possessing and bearing fruit. Exodus 23, 30, we've been saying it for a month now. I will drive them out before you little by little time until you become fruitful, take possession of it. Remember the word fruitful is bring forth and increase. That's what we're supposed to do. In our inheriting the promised land, we are to be fruitful. We are to produce a product in our life. That's what God's doing. What is the product of your life? If you had to step back for one moment and look around, and that's the great thing about having our eyes open spiritually is that we get a broader spectrum of what's really going on and we can say, what is the product of my life? What has been produced from my life? Because God is wanting you to produce something.
of the kingdom of God. Come on, are y'all with me? The word inherit is so that what we've been producing and being fruitful, we can pass it on. Are y'all with me? Has the time change got you? I prepared. I prepared for the time change. I went to bed an hour early. I thought, you know, I'm going to prepare. I know some of you did not get to. We can't pass on what we ain't got. See, the battle is to be fruitful and possess. The battle that's going on that we're going to have to fight, the battle to be fruitful and possess, and that all takes, that, that, that all involves this right here. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It's a scripture we use all the time in, our, in bull riding. God has not given us a spirit of timidity. And that word timidity there is fearful, cowardice. God didn't give us a spirit to be cowards. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. Because when fear comes in, faith goes out. There, you can't, there's no room for both. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and discipline. In other words, that word discipline is sound mind. God wants us to have a sound mind because it's going to affect what we're saying. Come on, that's why I can't... Get on that doom and gloom crowd. What's coming out of our mouth is going to affect everything in our natural. What we're speaking. And we see a great example of it in Jeremiah. If you'll turn to Jeremiah chapter 1. We're going to read there. But Jeremiah, he's the author of the the, uh, the largest prophetic book in the Bible. He prophesied for 40 years. Jeremiah started as a young man prophesying God's word. And listen, here's the deal. Prophecy is telling us that we are free to be who God's called us to be. Get a hold of that now. God would send his word saying who they are and who they should be. Here's what's going to happen if you don't. Here's what can happen if you do. See? And that all starts with the prophetic word from God. It all starts with the word of God and you being able to see it. This is what it's doing for my life. This is where it's taking me. Come on, Jeremiah 29, 11. Everybody in here knows it. You could quote it. For I have good plans for you. Jeremiah, it was rough. Because he was cr confronting a people who have rejected God's way. And they were serving other gods. In other words, they weren't possessing the land and they weren't bearing fruit. Because they got to thinking to themselves, well, I can do this way. I can do this. Does that make sense? But no, God's way is God's way. And so he's confronting these people they weren't bearing fruit and they weren't possessing and his life was not easy, but he remained faithful. He spoke the word of the Lord and they threw him in the, in, in the septic tank. He spoke the word of the Lord and they threw him in jail. His own family tried to kill him. Talk about being misunderstood Jeremiah, 
he would even have to, he would have to step back and he would have to remember, I'm saying what God's saying. I'm doing what God's doing. It wasn't that he didn't struggle with depression. It wasn't that he didn't struggle emotionally. How would you like your whole prophetic, your whole ministry, you're saying the word of God, what God's telling you, and they're jailing you, throwing you, family's not liking you. Come on. So you're having to work through this mind. Are y'all with me now? They, he wasn't, he, he didn't have Superman on his, he still had the, the human emotions. First thing that God tells him, he's starting to reassure him. That's what's so cool. When God shows up, he's just a young man. And he shows up and he says, I formed you in your womb. I knew you before you were born, consecrated, appointed you a prophet to the nations. Man, that's heavy for a kid. That's heavy for a kid. You know what the second thing God told him? First, he assured him that he made him. The second thing he said, Jeremiah, he said, he, uh, Jeremiah, uh, the first thing he responded is, is I'm just a kid. The second thing God told him, don't say you're just a kid. <laughs> Come on. Well, I just got saved. I, I don't know the Bible very. See, we do that. So the very first thing that Jeremiah had to work on was, that's what God started working on first. How you're thinking, what you're saying. Come on, man. You ask any professional athlete, what is the percentage, JW, how much does your mind play in roping? You're going to get anywhere from 50 to 90% that your mind plays in whatever you do. And then the next question I like to ask is, so now what are you doing about that? And then you get the blank stares and the uh, 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 crickets. So if our brain is 90% of the greatest tool in your toolbox, why don't we work on that? That's right where God started with Jeremiah. Man, y'all, come on. Proverbs tell us there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Why is that? Because the tongue, when you go to wagon it, is relating what's coming out of here. That's why God had to send the Holy Spirit to tame your tongue. Oh. And why would the devil not want us even acknowledging the Holy Spirit so that we just keep on wagging this thing that's putting us in? Oh, man. Come on, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? If we're going to fight the good fight of faith, we got to get a hold of this first. And then it's going to reflect what's coming out here. And then what's coming out here is going to start affecting what's out here. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If your life is not lining up with what's going on in the kingdom of heaven, you keep speaking. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Why would he say, oh man, Come on, that stuff's not even in my notes. We're getting ranch headquarters fresh. Come on. Man, when you start plugging all these scriptures in, you start seeing how powerful the mind and the tongue is in developing and you possessing and bearing fruit. 
That's why the enemy is after your mind. That's why it's so dangerous. Everybody get a hold of your seat. That's why it's so dangerous to plug your kid into Apple and Disney. Come on. Because there's a battle going on for our mind. It's a dangerous battle. The pressure is on like never before. How many of y'all, I do lots of traveling, and it is mind-boggling the people I pass that are on their phone. Can't get off of it. And when you leave here, this church, and you go down 1409, you better pay attention because I've had to dodge dozens on that road out there because they're on their phone. Come on. There is a battle for our mind going on. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. See, this Jer- God talking to Jeremiah. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up, to break down, to destroy, and, and to overthrow, to build, and to plant. Verse 11. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, What do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. Now the third thing that God says and comes to him is, he's saying, I'm going to give you the authority. I'm giving you the authority to build, to pluck, to, come on. Where have we heard that before? We heard that in Matthew 18 Verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. At the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, you've got the authority and you got a job. Come on. Jeremiah now had a job. Here's your job. You go pluck up and you tear down, you build up, and you... And he said, Jeremiah, what are you looking at? He said, I see an almond tree. And here's the thing about an almond tree. An almond tree is totally different from all the other trees. How many of y'all are struggling with your sinuses right now? Because everything is budding out right now. But an almond tree... Bud's out in January. Total opposite. God said, and why would God use that? Because something that should be asleep, waiting on the next season, God says, I'm never sleeping or slumbering, but I'm always watching over my word to perform it. I'm always watching. What is he waiting on? He's waiting on us to start speaking the word because he's watching over his word. And he's telling Jeremiah, I don't care how young you are, you just start speaking the word and I'm going to perform it. I'm going to bring it to pass. I'm going to do what you say. Come on. says, Jeremiah, it's a powerful truth that we, we get to pluck up and tear down and to build, to bind, to loosen. And God's watching over that word to perform it.
What do you see, Jeremiah? It's a powerful question. He says, I'm going to accomplish what you're saying. Come on, are you speaking life over your body or are you speaking death over it? You speaking life over your finances, over your relationships? Come on. What, what, are, you, what are we doing? It's a powerful truth. See, the mind is the most powerful tool in our toolbox. And it will help us accomplish our task and our assignment that God has put here for us to accomplish. Second Chronicles 16. Turn there. Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. Everybody knows this. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. You have acted foolishly in this indeed. From now on, you will surely have wars. Then Asa was angry with the seer and put him in prison. Now here's what you got to understand. Asa was the king. Asa was the king. Asa had depended on the Lord and God, he called upon God. He sought God and God moved and wiped out an army, a huge army. And now an army has come and put up a siege around uh, where he was at. And now he goes and he hires another king to come and fight on his behalf. And God, and he asked this seer what the Lord says. And the Lord said, you acted foolishly. Let's keep reading. And Asa was angry with the seer and put him in prison for he was enraged at him for this. And Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. And now the acts of Asa from first to last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah in Israel. And in 39 years, and in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet. His disease, come on, his disease was severe. Yet even... In his dis-ease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. So Asa slept with his fathers, having died in the 41st year of his reign. And they buried him. This is, this is when it was like God dropped a rock in me. And they buried him. In his own tomb, which he had cut out for himself. When we're not speaking the word of God and seeking God, come on. It's like we, he says, choose life and prosperity or death and adversity. Here's the most powerful thing about that. In, look in verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. You have acted foolishly in this. Indeed, from now on, you will surely have wars. Seek God first is what I'm telling you. God, how do you want to do this? God, how do you want to... How it, seek God on how first. My biggest problem is I think I can do it on my own ability. Instead of just going, okay, wait a minute, God, how do you want to do this? And so I usually end up jumping out of the pot into the fire. When I try to do it on my own and it's constant war. There's, there's no peace. Come, oh man, I guess I'm just...
preaching to myself. Because I like to be hands on. And I've even heard people, well, I don't want to bother God. I know he... <laughs> bother, bother him every day. That's why you're going to be blessed. Come on. I just, I just need a little piece of heaven and I don't want to bother God. How many of y'all ever heard that? God wants to be bothered. When you look up the word prayer, it means put a demand on. Oh, man. That's why in praise and worship, the people that get God's attention are usually the ones on their knees, hands in the air, hooting, hollering. Who I need God's attention. I don't want to just be absorbed into the crowd. Well, that's arrogant. Let me tell you something. When everybody's got that one kid, come on, that demands your attention. Daddy, look, dad, dad, daddy, look, daddy, daddy, look, daddy, look. And so what do you do? You give him the attention. And what do the other kids do? Well, they're just, he's the favorite. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> Come on, that's how that happens. Come on, demand your father's attention. We all know Jesus heard blind Bartimaeus the first time. But he didn't stop until the third and turn and go back. And that's why we got to push. Come on. And push and push. The people who are willing to push. Come on, out of our mouths. His eyes are moving to and fro, looking over his word to perform it. And what's he looking for? He's looking for those who are speaking it. Amen. Daddy, God, your word says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come on, when's the last time you put a demand on heaven? Ooh, that sounds, I, I don't know if I could put it. No, kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Come on. See, we can temporarily mask a problem with drugs, a bottle, sex, but only God can totally make us whole. That's why we seek him first. Now, he may use a doctor. Come on. I'm not against doctors. Listen, there's godly doctors. There's doctors who actually care about you and don't want to just mask what you got going on, but actually want to heal you. And not just give you another pill that might react to the other pill you got that reacts to the other pill you got. And now you're on the toilet. You can't get off and you got <laughs> tongue swelling up. You're blind and you get... <laughs> Come on. And all you had to do was quit eating the Twinkie. I know, at some point, you're going to hear something you don't like. Come on. Seek God first and find out how he wants to move in your life. He may, be want, he may take you to a doctor that wants your help, but he's not a Christian. And maybe you're the one to lead him there. Or maybe you're the one that he sees, scratches his head and going, I didn't do that. There's got to be a God. Right? 
Let's just don't get all in a bag and just like, no. You keep speaking the word of God over your life, seeking God. Come on, are y'all with me? Look in Jeremiah, go back to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, man. Verse 4, hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, what injustice, what injustice did your fathers find in me that they went far from me and walked after? after emptiness and became empty. Holy smokes. If 2020 didn't do anything else, we seen lack of faith and emptiness in the body of Christ. People who saw everything but God sitting in the church Sunday after Sunday, just saying a prayer, waiting to go to heaven. Come on. God says, why, what made your fathers find some injustice in me? It's because they didn't seek him. They assumed, they began to think that other gods might work. See, when God brought Egypt, when God brought Israel out of Egypt, they had just been absorbed into all them pagan religions. They were serving the pagan gods just like the Egyptians and everybody else, but God had made a covenant with Abraham that he's faithful to. And God was trying to get all that pagan worship out of them. Come on. That there's only one true God. Why did they get halfway into the wilderness and go, gee, it was a lot better when we were back there in bondage? <laughs> Come on. Their own words, the things that they were thinking was keeping them from the promised land. Why do you think when they got to the promised land and went to go in, they were grasshoppers in their own sight? Because they said it. They said it. And God is just like, oh, man. Okay, y'all ain't going in. You're going to die out here in what you're speaking. Joshua and Caleb, that's the promised land. It is good. It is what God said it is. And he'll give it to us if he said he would. They're speaking out of their mouths, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's my mountain, and it doesn't matter how old I am, I can go get it. I don't care how old you are or where you're at or where you came into this Christianity, God can still give you your mountain and your promise and you can inherit and be fruitful on it and possess it. I don't care. Because I consider him worthy. Because I consider him worthy. And Joshua said the most powerful thing at 80 years old. They said, hey, the baddest of the bad live on that mountain. He said, I don't care. I'm just as strong today as I was 40 years ago when all these other folks are speaking doom and gloom. Come on, man. When they're speaking, I'm not going to make it. When I'm a little grasshopper, when I'm... Caleb said... And I could just see this. It probably didn't happen, but I'm just telling you, I could just see Caleb over there sharpening his sword. <laughs> Give me my mountain. And he's sharpening his sword. You know why? Because he done helped everybody else at 80 years old 
fight for their position and promise and possession. Oh, man. Caleb said, mm -hmm. now it's mine. Give it to me because God said it was. And for 40 years, I've been waiting for that funeral <laughs> when everybody else was, oh, mourning the last father that died. Joshua and Caleb were going, praise God. And they left that funeral headed somewhere. Come on, man. What are you saying? What are you thinking? <laughs> Look what he says. They did not say, where is the Lord? Verse 6. They did not say, where is the Lord who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and deep darkness, through a land that no one crossed and where no man dwelt. I brought you into the fruitful land to eat its fruit and its good things, but you came and defiled my land and my inheritance and, my, and made it an abomination. The priest did not say, where's the Lord? And those who ha handle the law did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that did not profit. He's saying, listen, yeah, listen, where you're at right now, it may be empty. It may be deserty. It may be darkness. But let me tell you, God is, it says right there, through. You're just going to go through it. You're going to go through it so he can teach you how awesome he really is. And, and show us how big you're just going through it right now. You're not there to dwell in that. And the only reason you're dwelling in it right now is because he hasn't changed. Come on. He's watching over that word to perform it. And when we don't change our thinking, we can't change our situation. Oh. Come on, if you can't change your thinking and start speaking what the word says, then what's going on out here is not going to change. Come on, you may be feeling confused and anxieties and pain. And listen, I'm telling you right now, you're going to feel the symptoms of sinus, of sickness, of cancers, of lung problems, of whatever. But it's up to you whether it stays or goes. That's why I can't, it, it's hard for me. It's just, you just got to speak. Speak it till you see it. I'd rather die riddled with cancer, speaking life over my body, than just be consumed by cancer and just quit. Come on. I'm going to keep saying the word of God that I'm healed. I'm delivered. God's going to. Because I consider him faithful. Consider him faithful. And watch what he does. Watch what he does. Yeah. I may have to change some things. I'm going to have to change some things. But we do those things. See, our thought process has got to change. And never before have we seen such emptiness in our faith as we did in 2020. Never before. Never before. 
And something that we say around here all the time is purpose without process yields no fruit. Every person in here has purpose. Every person. Nobody's exempt. Well, he just doesn't, I just don't feel like I, I know what, it, no, you got one. You got a purpose. We just have to quit whining about it. <laughs> we have to quit speaking things and thinking on things and dwelling on things that are keeping us from fulfilling it because you're in a process that's working on your mind to take you, come on, to where you can bear fruit. So purpose without process will yield no fruit. And God knows that because he wants a product, and so he wants to work on us. Every product goes through product testing. It's just that simple. John 15, verse 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. God's not mad at you. He's just trying to get that multiplication out of you. Come on, hear me, hear me, hear me. God's, God's going to always be pruning on us. God doesn't use the perfect. He uses the willing. And you're going to have to be willing to be pruned. Oh, man. Come on. Because he knows what's going to... Everybody in here knows the analogy. If you got a dead limb on a tree, it'll eventually kill the whole tree because that tree's trying to bring that dead limb to life that's dead. And so that's why you prune those dead limbs that aren't producing. Come on. That's what God's doing. Verse 3, you are already clean because of the word. And here's, let, let me say something about that right there. You know what keeps most people from producing and going in is shame. Shame. God hates shame. Because shame keeps you from bombarding heaven with your prayers. Shame pushes you away from God. Well, I, you don't know what I did in my past, and you don't know I can't, I can't get... Come on. And so shame takes us away from God and keeps us from being who we really are. In the enemy, when he can get us buying into that, well, I'm not worthy. Are y'all with me? Because we've all been there. We've all fought that battle in our mind, if not fighting it now. Well, why would God heal me? I just, I'm just, why wouldn't he? For, what I can do. You don't even begin to understand yeah. my love. And, and you want to talk about shame. Yeah. Keep, keep me from loving you for a whole season. It's good. Because you want to think your thoughts, and you think you're so entitled to think, because you've been thinking on me your whole life. I want you to say this. Action, what thought becomes action, action becomes a habit. It appears sequential, but it's not. Because before we make that sin, that action, our minds are surrounded by habits. So not only are we fighting the thought, hmm. we're fighting the way that we've been thinking our whole life, that habit. Hmm. We're right on the verge of stepping over this line of action and leading us right more into a position where we go down the same path. And there's certain vices that we all have. And they're in the darkest part of our lives and we don't think we're 
hurt anybody else. Because <laughs> we would never hurt this person or that person. But this is what's leading to my sin. Nobody knows about it. And we keep ourselves separated from God so much that we can't go through that process and get to that purpose. We are trapped by the thoughts. And then the, and the, and the body medically thinks, oh, in this situation, I always do what to happen. We're surrounded. If you don't have a friend you can call to get you out of this, you've got to have a praise song on your phone. <laughs> it's on auto dial to turn on. Because if you don't, it's never going to change. Yeah, that's right. That's good. That's good. Because we always think, and that's what's awesome about God, though, is that he is the very essence of love. And we always think, how can he love me? Because we've, we've already thought out there that, oh, man, is the roof going to fall in? <laughs> Come on. If that was the case, none of us would be in here. But God so loves us that he's going to hold the roof up so we can hear his word. The fact that you even got up and came here this morning tells you that God is pursuing you. That God is after you. And that he wants you. And that there is, there is freedom. And the prophetic word brings the freedom to tell you who you really are. And what you really can be. And who are we to tell God who we really are? Because he made us from the mother's womb. And has a future and a hope. And a plan of welfare. But we have to choose life and prosperity. And not death and adversity. And so the devil knows if he can get us choosing wrong. That's all it takes is one time. And we start backing up. For years, I would watch and you would see young men walk down that tunnel at the NFR, the Super Bowl of Rodeo, and they'd come one year and you'd never see them again. It just blows their mind and the pressure because when you walk in, the, walk in there it's not just another rodeo <coughs> and the pressure come on you can have the most talented guys on the face of the planet in the practice pen. But when you put them under pressure, when they have to perform under pressure, there starts becoming a separation. And the top 15 are in the top 15 consistently because they've worked on this. It's not that they don't go through slumps. It's not that they have it. No. But they worked on this. And they've learned how to be fruitful and possess under pressure. God's taking you to an inheritance that you're going to step into and you're going to be under pressure. Because you're not going to always want to feel like fighting the good fight. I wish I could tell you, oh yeah, whew, it's great. I'm just going to get up and I'm going to feel like going to fighting. No, it takes 10 minutes for my body to quit creaking and cracking. <laughs> Till I can get my hands working. Come on, you're not going to always 
feel like fighting a good fight. But your mentality has become, I am going to fight it. I'm, today, I'm bearing fruit. What is the fruit? How about love, joy, peace, patience, kind of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Look what it says. I, I tell you what, I'm going to have to turn there. I'm probably at plumb out of time. Are y'all okay? Because you need to hear this. Galatians 5, 22. Casey, I'm going to back all the way up into 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. This is very important. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. So there, the battle is within us. There is a battle going on for you to see things spiritually or to see things fleshly. Whether you're going to give in to the flesh or you're going to walk according to the Spirit. Look what it says. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Freedom. Come on. Now the deeds of the flesh, they're evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, Envying, drunkenness, carousing, things like these of which I forewarn you, just as I forewarned you that those who practice such things shall not inherit. Man, we're back to that word inherit. I want to inherit the promises, but if I'm giving in to all this, come on. If I'm constantly at war here and giving in, but look what he says. But the fruit of the Spirit, but the fruit of what you're saying, the fruit that you're allowing, the pruning that you're allowing to take place in your life, Come on, you abiding into the vine of who Jesus is, the fruits of the Spirit, if you're abiding in the vine, if you're thinking on the Word of God, if you're speaking the Word of God, it's producing love, joy, peace. Who doesn't need some peace right now? In the midst of everything going on, a little peace would be nice, wouldn't it? Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. We're plucking. Come on. We're tearing down. We're loosening we're binding. Oh, man, come on. Are, are y'all seeing this? Our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but it's against... Come on. We're going to talk about being faith agents next week. Agents of faith. We are agents of faith. And when you're an agent, come on, you've done been through some training. We need some training. And that's what God's doing when we are walking through the deserts. We're walking through the dry places. We're whipping an enemy here. We're whipping an enemy. See, we're tearing down the strongholds of the flesh. Come on, man. Sensualities. 
Come on. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? If you would stand. How do we inherit the promise? How do we inherit the promised land? How do we take and possess by bearing fruits of the Spirit? That's how we possess the promised land. That's how we walk into our inheritance. That's how we have love and joy and peace. That's how we possess what his word says. Come on, so we're going to leave here. We're going to work on what? We're going to work on this. Here's what God's word says about I'm blessed. He says, I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. Not only am I blessed, but my livestock is blessed. My kids are blessed. There will be no miscarrying or barren among us. And it even says that God will not put the diseases on me that he put on the world. Why? Because I'm choosing life. I'm choosing to be prosperous. I'm choosing. And when we're bearing fruits of the Spirit, when we're being, when we have peace and when we have love, what is, go to the Beatitudes. Read the Beatitudes. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll what? Inherit the earth. Thy kingdom, oh man. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because we're bearing fruit of peace and joy. Because why? Because we're walking by the Spirit and we begin to speak what the Spirit of the Lord says and God's watching over His Word to perform it. So there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And so I'm doing what the Word says and then I begin to produce See, that ain't hard. It ain't hard at all, is it? Ain't hard at all. Man, God is that good. And what you heard this morning was a prophetic word that God's going to make his name great. And he's going to make it great through you. Come on. Come on, Keisha. God's going to make his name great through you. It's not arrogant. It's not cocky. It's just who you are. You're God's kid, heaven. Nate, God's going to bless you, brother, because you, when, when you seek him, you're going to find him. And you made a choice to find him. I was fighting it the whole time. I was like, oh, I'm so tired. I can't even see straight. We were up late last night, but my heart was about to beat out of my chest, so I don't want to go home with that. Um, <laughs> many of you have heard, um, and some of you haven't, and um, we shared it a while back. It's on a video from the church, but... Um, I used to pray this prayer over my kids, and um, I prayed it for so long, they were starting to be able to say it, and so God told me to have them to start speaking it, and um, so now all three of them have it memorized, and it's pretty long, and um, yesterday we got a phone call, or I got a phone call, and <laughs> Pecos was uh, uh, with the Bethes turkey hunting, and um Christy had called and said he wasn't getting, he wasn't, he was laboring to breathe. And um, I knew what that meant. He had gotten into something um, out there that was irritating his airways. 
And um, she said, I just wanted the permission to do, and I'm just telling you, if there's anybody <laughs> that I would want him to be with, it's her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I had such a peace, because any other time I would have. Um, but my, I was working on me, because he was six hours away, and it wasn't getting better. And every two hours, we were, every 30 minutes, we were on phone calls trying to decide, should they head home, should they... Should they stay? Should they go? And they decided to load up and start heading our way because he wasn't, um, he, they were, he was needing albuterol before two hours. I mean, just could not get air. And I, I thought to myself, you know, I said, in the, word, in the word it says, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come so that you may have life and life abundantly. And I stopped and I said, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but why can he not touch him? The prayer that we pray or the prayer that Pecos prays every night without fail is no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No enemy can come into my camp. I am healed, healthy, and whole from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. I plead the blood of Jesus over me to protect me and keep me safe. I thank God for my wife that she'll be a godly woman and love me like my mama loves my daddy. And I, I sat there and I said, God... He speaks it every night. And all of the overwhelming peace that came over me, that the weapon may come, but it cannot prosper with him. That's right. It can't. That's it good. physically cannot because, and this is what I want y'all to hear if you don't hear anything else I said. In the word, it says seek first. But what I'm going to tell you is seek before. That's, yeah. You have to seek before it comes. That's right. You have to be ready because we weren't scrambling for what little bit of faith we could have. You know, oh my God, oh my, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? No, it was God, we already said. That's right. And so, what I want you to do is seek before. Yep. Seek before the occasion arises yep. so that when it does arise, you stand and say, God, no, I said. Yeah. He already Good. said. Yep. Because if you wait, if you leave here yep. and you wait until you hit a moment that you need it, you're going to be scrambling for yeah, it. That's good. And that's not fun because I've been there too. Yep. So you need to speak it every day. You need to be in it every day so that you have it when the occasion arises. Man, that's good. Yep. This is the first time this has ever happened to me to be on the other side of a testimony like that. Yeah. <laughs> but... I just can see it clear listening to her talk about how she felt. He was with me. Yeah. I had him in my hands. Praying over him like he's my baby. You know. And I wasn't worried. Right. She needed to know what she knows and she needed to trust in God because she couldn't see it. But I could see him and I had him in my hands and I was trusting him the same way and I could see him walking around and talking. Yeah. Yeah. And I told him, I said, look, I've been a little boy and I've wanted my mama. <laughs> I'm taking this kid to his mama right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Regardless of how he felt, but because yeah. I didn't have the fear. Yeah. Because I had him. Yeah. But it's important. That's right. What you believe and what you think. Or she would have been in that truck. Yeah. <laughs> driving 12 hours for no reason. Yeah. At least they were at the doctor literally one-tenth of the time that it took us to get her to him. <laughs> yeah. But I want to say, since I'm talking to y'all, because I love y'all and I see <laughs> what God is doing to me through our pastor's word and what God has given him. I read this the other day. And I know what the world sees and what we preach. But we, we don't, you don't preach on sin. We don't as Christians to, con, to condemn you because it's pointed back at ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's because of how it affects you and what it keeps you from. And keeps you from understanding. Your sin, A.W. Tozer wrote, hmm. your sin may be private or may be secret, but it's not private. Yeah. Because it affects you and everything around you. That's right. And it keeps you from being able to have the things that God promises you. 
That's good. Turn your back on those things and seek him. Just like he said a while ago. If you got a set of song, better yeah. yet, just play it all the time. <laughs> yeah. My passwords at work always, how I start my day, have some form or name of God in them. <laughs> yeah. Where the first thing that I sit down to really think about is him. Because I need that. Because I think bad thoughts. Yeah, that's right. I want to hurt things and break things sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I know it's not right. Yeah, it's good. Yep, that's good. That's it. Yep. Seek him. David said, early I will seek him. That's not early in the morning. That's before I need him. It's before I need him, seek him. Before I need him. Before I need you, God, I consider you. What did he, what did he say, Jeremiah? They were empty. Why? Because when they got to the promised land, they hadn't been seeking him. They'd just been seeking the manna or the water or the... God, I could preach a whole nother message. And they got to the promise and they were empty because they hadn't been seeking him. They'd just been seeking his hand and his provision, what he could do for them. Oh, man. Seek him early. God, I'm going to giants. I'm going to giants. And I'm going to slay them. Because your word says. Because you said it's mine. Because you. And I'm thanking you now. If you're healthy now, thank him now. Father, we come to you this morning. Make your name great. Lord, make your name great. Make your name great. Reveal yourself to us. Father, we thank you that we have your word to stand on. We thank you, Father God, that we are members of a covenant where you dwell on the inside of us. And Father, we thank you right now for your rich, abounding love and mercy. You give us no boundaries to our faith. And that little by little, We get to possess and inherit all the promises. As we go through this process, Lord, we keep our eyes on you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love y'all. We'll see you Wednesday. <laughs>